Hey everyone, welcome back to channel Tech and Art. Hope you guys doing good. So today we will discuss about the trace flag three double two six. So before starting the session, I would request to each and everyone who ever newly joined channel, please like to subscribe and don't forget to share. Please visit the channel playlist SQL Server DBA. More than two seventy videos are there. All are related to you know day to day activities. So before starting the session, let me jump. So basically, uh, today we are going to talk about the trace flag three double two six. What is the use of this trace flag and why we are using? So basically, this trace flag, you know, all right. Uh, so for SQL Server, you know, uh, for the anything, it is writing in an error log. Okay. So let's see. Uh, for the backup things, actually. You have a particular instance, and there you have more than fifty or hundred instance of instance uh, backup or DB. So if it will start writing the logs in error log, so log file uh, log file will be flooded like anything, right? Let's consider a scenario. You have a, you know fifty database for on a particular instance, and every fifteen minutes log backup is uh, you know running, and each successful backup it will write the logs in error log, right? So in a, in a day it will be you know. As per the calculation, it will go to like you know 4800, 4800 messages in error log. So your error log looks like you know flooded like anything, right? To avoid the situation, we are using this trace flag. So this trace flag basically, you know, it will not write the successful backups. You know, uh, we'll see in a live demo. So I'm going to you know take this backup or particular database my DB and let's see how it's work. Let me see why agent is running. It's running right. Okay. Uh, so uh, before enabling the trace, I am going to take the backup of this database, and let's see how it's work. Let me adjust my screen a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take the backup of this database. Backup completed. Uh, so I'm going to see an error log whether it's cited or not. So as you can see, backup it's written in a error log, right? So if you complete like three, four, five times, okay, one more times. So what will happen every time? You know, you can see. Backup is written. So like that, you know, if you have more database in a particular instance, so it will write the successful backups, right? So what I'm doing now, I'm going to enable this trace flag. So before that, I will see this log. Okay, let me execute first. So the trace is enabled. Now you can see here in another log, trace is enabled, right? So now I'm going to again take the backup. Okay. Or of the same database, three times I have taken right, and we'll see whether log it's written or not. As you can see, after the trace enabling, there is a no successful uh, you know backup log in a error log written right. So now we'll do the testing whether the failure backup is you know getting written or not. So intentionally we'll uh, we'll make this backup fail. Okay, two times I did it. We'll see whether the At least failure backup is writing not yes, so failure backup we can get. So you got the point, right? If you have so many database on a particular instance, like let's say which I told you, number of databases. So if every 15 minutes log backup will writing the logs, so your error log will flooded like anything, right? So you can enable this trace flag by enabling the you know DBCC trace on, or either you can go to configuration manager and you know set the value. From there, so whenever the database backup is getting failed, only those log will be captured in an error log, right? Or the successful backup anyway, you can uh, get it from the uh, backup tables. So well, that's it for today. It's a small blog, but uh, hope it's helpful. Small technique. 